Hello and welcome to game 62 of TCC's 15th Super Final, played between Stockfish and Lila Chess Zero. This is now the reverse game of the Trompovsky attack that we have seen in the previous video. This time Lila is white, and if you would like to know more about the ideas behind these opening moves, then I invite you to check the first game. There should be a link in the upper right section of the board. In the first game, Lila played d6, e6, and eventually f5, but she never took on the d5 square. Here, after e6 and e4, Stockfish took on d5, and after e takes on d5, d6 and c4, we enter into this Benoni like structure where white has a pawn on f3, preventing this knight to develop to f3, and black has a queen on b6 in the way of a b5 break. Stockfish now continued with g6. Having pawns on d6 and c5 prevent this bishop's development on this diagonal, so this bishop is coming to g7, where together with the queen will put pressure on b2. Lila now gave a check on e2, which is a good move. This bishop doesn't want to go to e7, he wants to go to g7, so now the black king has to move which means that he won't be able to castle anymore. And now Lila just simply moved out with the queen to back to d1, allowing her own pieces to be developed via e2. Bishop g7, bishop d3, and now Stockfish played knight f to d7. This knight wants to come to e5 and attack this bishop and the c4 pawn. And this also uncovers the bishop on g7, and uh, now the bishop can attack b2. But Lila completely ignored the threat on b2 and played knight d2. Please, Stockfish, take my pawn. Stockfish, of course, didn't take the pawn because it's not good for black. But let's see what happens. After bishop takes, bishop takes, and queen takes, black indeed wins a pawn, but he can't afford to go after pawns like that when his king is stuck in the center and is behind in development. After something like knight c3, defending on uh, the pawn on a2, white is already threatening to play rook b1 and attack b7, and by putting more pressure on black's queen side, make its development even more difficult. Black could play something like rook e8 now, to, to pin this knight and prevent rook b1, because now the queen could take on c3, but white can just simply castle, and after knight e5, white can play rook b1, queen a3, rook b3, queen a6, defending d6, anticipating knight b5 attacking it. Bishop d7, knight c3, bishop takes on b5, knight takes on b5, and knight d7. And we can see that black's position is very, very difficult. First of all, he can't take on a2 because he can't afford to lose the d6 pawn, that would be suicidal for black. So this queen needs to babysit the d6 pawn and is not happy about it. He wants to conquer the world, not babysit a pawn. And also this rook can't really move because then rook a3 comes and the a7 pawn falls. And also f4 is coming, chasing the knight back and the black king is stuck in the center and so on. Black's position is just simply not good. So taking the pawn on b2 after knight e2 would be a big mistake. So Stockfish played knight e5 attacking these two. And now after knight c3 he has to make a choice how to develop these two minor pieces on the queen side. This knight obviously can't go to c6 because of the d5 pawn, so the knight has to go either to d7 or a6. But if the knight is going to d7, then where is this bishop going? Because e6, g4 and h3 are unavailable. The only two squares where the bishop can go are d7 and f5. And if the knight goes to d7, then the bishop has to go to f5. And going there in this position is not good, because after bishop takes and g takes on f5, black structure is just quite simply horrible. So black could take maybe before bishop f5, maybe he could take on d3, and after queen takes, 
then develop the bishop to f5, but this is also not good because after the queen moves away, white is constantly threatening, g threatening g4, attacking that bishop, and the knight cannot develop to d7 because this bishop then would be trapped. So the conclusion is then that this bishop has to go to d7. f5 is just too dangerous. And that means that the knight then has to go to a6. There's no other choice. So the game continued then after knight c3 with bishop d7 and now castles knight a6 and now b3. Lila wants to play f4 and attack this knight but she doesn't want this knight to take her bishop. She wants to, to push this knight back to d7 or f7 or maybe even trap it if Stockfish is not paying attention. So with b3 she's defending the c4 pawn in order to be able to retreat the bishop back to c2 and then she wants to play h3 to take away the g4 square from the knight and then finally attack it with f4. Stockfish continued with king c7 and now Lila played a3 to take away the b4 square from that knight. Stockfish continued with rook e8 and as we can see he managed to develop most of his pieces. This knight and the queen though stuck here on the queen side are a bit unhappy. Lila continued now with her plan, bishop c2, king b8, the king makes way for one of these pieces to come back to c7, h3 and now Stockfish played f5. To allow this knight to retreat back to f7 after f4. Rook b1 defends b3. Rook g8. Stockfish wants to open some lines on the king side with b5 and maybe even b4. King h1. Queen back to d8. Bishop d2. Queen e7. And now bishop d3. Lila is also improving her, her bishops. And these two bishops now create a very nice wall here on the e-file. Stockfish now tries to improve this knight on f7, which currently can go neither to e5 and neither to g5. So Stockfish played him back to d8. But as we can see, c6 and e6 are both unavailable. So it's not very clear what are Stockfish's intentions with that knight. But as we'll see immediately, Stockfish knows exactly where the knight wants to be. The game continued with b4. Lila of course wants to attack the black king. That's the purpose of the game. But after b6, taking on c5 is not very good. Because then this knight will land on c5 and he's just a monster knight. So after b6, instead of taking, Lila pushed the pawn to b5. Pushing the knight back to c7. And her idea now is to play a4, a5, take on b6, open the a5, and mate the black king. So the game continued now with queen c2, bishop f6, a4, and just before Lila could get in a5, the knight from d8 jumps to b7 and controls a5. Lila now continues with knight c1. She wants to move this knight to b3 to control the a5 square. She also wants to play knight e2 to allow this bishop to see the a5 square and then get in a5 and continue with the plan. Stockfish of course didn't want to wait to see what happens if Lila succeeds doing that and he pushed his own agenda and played g5. He also wants to open the g file and attack the white king. And continuing the plan with knight b3 and trying to get in a5 is, is very dangerous for Lila because after g4 Stockfish is already threatening to take on h3, open the g file and if Lila would play something like h4 let's say, trying to keep it closed, then Stockfish could play g3, placing this king in a mating net and then after something like a5 Stockfish could play bishop d4 and this queen is already threatening to mate the white king. So Lila can't really continue her offensive on the queen side. She has to defend. So after g5, she took on g5 and after bishop takes, she moved back the knight to e2. 
Now this knight wants to go to f4, where from it uh, defends very nicely the g2 and h3 squares. And now Stockfish has to be careful, because now if we play something, let's say just the passing move h6, then this knight gets to f4, and Lila could continue with knight e2, and then this bishop has again visibility over the a5 square, and then Lila could get in a5 at some point and continue his uh, and continue her attack. So after knight e2, since this bishop is very strong and very dangerous, Stockfish chose to take him out, and now after queen d2, Stockfish played knight a5. A move that Lila is not very impressed with, she thinks that this knight is misplaced on a5. Lila now evaluates the position at plus 2.4 for white. She continued now with rook f3, she wants to take on f5 since that pawn is weak, h5, rook f1, and now h4. If black would have played here knight b3, then after queen c2 this is just nothing for black. The knight has to go back, or if it goes to d4, then knight takes, pawn takes, knight e2, and this pawn on d4 is just weak. After h4, though, Lila continued with rook f2, rook f8, and now Lila can't really take here because this bishop has to guard the c4 square. But she found another very strong move. She played queen h6 with a double attack on h4 and d6. She wants d6, of course. She intends to continue with rook e3 to attack that queen and make it move away and then take on d6. The knight went back defending d6, but Lila still went on with the plan of attacking the queen with the rook, queen f6, and now Lila exchanged the queens and after knight takes, she played rook f4. She wants now the h4 pawn. Defending the h4 pawn with rook h8 doesn't really work because Lila can double attack it with the knight from g1 and f3. But if uh, Lila would play knight g1 now, this doesn't quite work yet because black has knight h5 attacking the rook. And if the rook moves back, then there's no taking on h4. And if the rook takes now on h4, then Lila would lose the exchange after knight g3, rook takes, and rook takes on h4. However, after rook h8, Lila could play first king h2, and now there's no check anymore on g3, so this knight could come and win down h4. But after rook f4, Stockfish didn't even bother defending the h4 pawn and just played bishop c8. Lila now took the pawn, of course, and after knight d7, knight f4, and knight e5, she has a new plan. She wants now to win, of course, the f5 pawn. So here she jumped into the e6 square with the knight, cutting this bishop's defense of the f5 pawn. Taking the knight doesn't work, because after d takes on e6, this knight jumps to d5, and e7 is just too dangerous. So after knight e6, Stockfish played first rook f6, but after bishop f1, he didn't take the knight yet. He first played rook e8, and after rook g3, now she took the knight. d takes, rook takes, but Lila doesn't care, she just wanted the d5 square for her knight. Stockfish now goes for a rook exchange with rook g6, but Lila temporarily turns it down with rook c3. And her plan of winning f5 now is to move this rook to f4 and the other rook to g5. And once these rooks are in position, she can add a further attacker to the pawn with knight e3. Or just use the knight to defend c4 and then attack f5 with the bishop from g6 or from c2. And now we move forward to move 59 where the white rooks are attacking f5, but Stockfish didn't bother defending it with rook f8 because of the plan that I mentioned with knight e3 and bishop h5, bishop g6. So instead of rook f8, he played knight b3, and after rook takes and rook takes, Lila chose to, to win back the rook with knight e7 check, 
king d7 and now knight takes on f5. The game continued with knight c1, bishop f1, guarding these two, rook f8, g4, knight b3, rook f2 and now knight d2, stockfish is attacking c4 twice and it's making use of the fact that the rook can take on d2 because of the fork on f3. Bishop g2, but now knight takes on c4. Bishop d5, king c7, rook a2, knight a5, king h2, and these pawns are quite simply rolling in, and white wins. And now I will make the remaining moves on the board so that you can see the end of the game. This was another interesting game in which, after Lila briefly attacked on the queen side, in an attempt to open some lines, Stockfish actually weakened his uh, kingside pawns and Lila managed to take advantage of them. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other videos, maybe you will like them. Thanks for watching and see you soon, bye bye.